Good evening, everyone. So we actually uh, interrupt your ordinary Monday evening here for a special broadcast from us at TrueSec. Uh, seriously, uh, there was just a public disclosure regarding a patch that was delivered one month ago at Patch Tuesday, and it concerns the uh, vulnerability CVE 2020-1472. And uh, this is something that is so critical that we thought that we need to uh, talk a bit about it and uh, broadcast that. So what versions of Windows does this exploit relate to? The basically all server operating system versions that are currently supported by Microsoft are affected by this vulnerability. Naturally, anything older than that that are not supported has their own issues. Uh, and should be considered vulnerable as well. Yeah, because the, the, the issue is uh, connected to the RPC service, right? Right. So, I mean, even an older version of Windows Server is still affected by it, but it won't get patched. Exactly, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what, what does this uh, vulnerability do then? How is it bad? Yeah, so that's the most uh, worrying part, because uh, basically as an attacker, what you can do is that if you can only reach a domain controller network wise, um, so if you can attempt to authenticate to the RPC service or net log on service uh, of a domain controller, um, then uh, as an unauthenticated user, you can escalate your privileges and take the entire Active Directory. So you go basically from no account to domain admin or everything else in Active Directory uh, in one step. Um, so, yeah, like I mentioned, it only requires network reachability. Okay. No account. So, uh, that sounds kind of bad, and I'm guessing this is uh, seriously able to be automated as well then. Yeah, and that's uh, what makes this even worse. Uh, you, yeah, it's, it's very easy to exploit. There are uh, exploits public online already. Uh, in just a few hours, there have been at least three or four different versions that popped up on GitHub. Uh, and it's really easy to just make your own version, to be honest, based on that. Uh, uh, so it requires pretty much uh, very little knowledge about what you're doing to actually run this. Okay, but in, in what scenarios then do we see that you can use this? Uh, what scenarios are applicable to, to leverage this exploit? Uh, basically, because the only th since the only thing you need is to actually be able to reach the domain controller, this effectively means that if you manage to compromise a client that can talk to the domain controller, it's game over. If it's a server, even if it's a server in the DM set that can talk to the domain controller, then it's over. Even if it's just directly through a VPN solution or even a Linux machine, anything essentially that can talk to the domain, domain controller can effectively exploit, exploit this vulnerability. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, any type of entry point that an attacker can have, right? Yeah. You can fish a user, you can uh, exploit a web application or whatever. Um, so, I mean, and that's what we call the entry point, right, of an attack. Mm -hmm. So, the first time that you enter the environment. Uh, what happens next is usually a phase of uh, uh, discovery and escalation inside the environment to obtain access to more systems and resources and accounts and so on. Uh, the result of having such an easy step for going from, from zero to the entire Active Directory is that uh, the time that it takes from when they get in until they compromise the infrastructure is pretty much none. You need to click one button. That's pretty much what it is. So uh, that time being very short, it also means that your detection window is very short. because. Uh, I mean, that's the typical time that you can and really want to detect things is from when they get in. That's when you can start seeing things in the environment and you can measure and detect them until they do some serious damage. Uh, that's where you really need to detect. But like I said, this window with this vulnerability becomes really, really short. If uh, your domain controls are not patched, then they can go really bad really fast. Yeah, and and I, I picked up on something interesting there. You said that it's it's easy to use this exploit, uh, so I'm I'm guessing that means you don't have to be like a nation state hacker to be able to use this. It's 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 so bad that you just need to use Google more or less, and then you can run this code. Yeah, you. I mean, 
yeah, you can Google for it. Uh, I'm sure there will soon going to be a tutorial on YouTube as well, if you like that uh, uh, <laughs> that type instead. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you can run Python, there are actually libraries that do pretty much everything for you. So you get you get the script of GitHub, you run it, you just give it an IP address of the domain controller you want to target, and then it's done. This is uh, definitely serious. I mean, uh, yeah. So we talked about the detection window, uh, but also I'm, I'm guessing it's not really an easy thing to detect either. It's, I mean, it doesn't really pop up an event ID saying now this bad thing happened. No, I mean, we have started looking into that and we will continue now. It's just been, you know, a short time that it's been out uh, with the exploit and everything. Uh, I mean, it's, Technically possible, obviously, because uh, it, it's it's an attack based on uh, uh, performing uh, a few hundreds even attempts at authenticating first. It's not a pure, uh, pure brute force in terms of authentication, but it's uh, it's a vulnerability in the protocol itself, um, which uh, to be exploited requires many requests. So I think average is 250 something. So network wise, yes, technically you can see that there are uh, maybe hundreds of requests uh, to the domain controller, but in a, in any realistic environment, you're going to have thousands of requests every minute or even more, depending on the size, to the net logon service on a domain controller. That happens all the time, so that in itself is not really feasible. Um, we started looking if there is anything obvious on the system itself, because uh, I mean, what you do with the exploit is that you reset the password of the domain controller. Uh, by exploiting the vulnerability, you override the password of the computer account on the domain controller, um, which means then you know the password of the computer account. And since it's a domain controller, you have the permissions to perform a synchronization of Active Directory, which is called DC Sync uh, for replication service. Uh, so, um, and now I lost what I was going to say, but. Um, it's hard to detect due to all the right. normal noise, about. so to speak. I mean, it's it's hard to spot the one bad egg amongst all the others. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. that password, uh, you override the password, but it's not an actual password reset event that you can look at in the logs. That's what I was getting to. Okay. So uh, we need to look a bit deeper on the systems when they are exploited to see if, uh, what traces we can actually use to perform detection. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, well, that's a work in progress, but how do we then defend against this? Uh, what is it we can do? Effectively, one of the few methods or pretty much the only known method right now is to patch. Okay. Uh, so on the 11th of August, Microsoft released patches for all the supported operating systems. Uh, this is part of a, of a two-phase enrollment process. Um, what this patch does is that it actually it mitigates this issue, but it also has um, the option for you to, by group policy, allow devices to still perform this type of uh, insecure authentication, essentially, uh, while you troubleshoot trying to figure out what has happened. So they've actually, Microsoft have actually added a specific event ID 5829 that will allow for you to detect the devices that are using this insecure method of authentication. Uh, come February the 9th, I believe it was, 2020, so Q1 next year, uh, this 21. is 21, yeah, 2021, yeah. Uh, this will be essentially forced and um, on on all the main controls that are patched, uh, and this will actually also remove the event ID. So you basically have until then to patch, figure out which machines that are not supporting this this up, uh, updated version, and then either get rid of them or patch those systems as well. Uh, which basically means, since this is the only way of detecting this or only way of mitigating this, uh, and we don't really have any good way right now that we know of of detecting this, patching is pretty important for all domain controllers. Yeah, One and, thing and, to uh, add on top of that uh, is that uh, this is really easy to actually automate and make it a worm, because uh, I mean, you don't really need to do any discovery. The only thing you need to do once you get on any machine is talk to a domain controller which is something that is uh, really straightforward to do. Um, so, I mean, in the worst case scenario, uh, 
someone will actually come up with a great idea of of making a wormable uh or making a worm that uses this vulnerability to escalate and then do whatever i mean it could be a new wanna cry uh, or it could be uh, any type of widespread infection like we've seen in the past that's the worst case scenario and in that case the impact will be probably much higher uh now again it's not i mean it's the patch was released a month ago so now the number of organizations that have been patched their domain controllers and they need to patch all their domain controllers uh then uh, i don't know how big that number is but i'm fairly certain there is a big uh, uh, chunk of organizations that have been patched all of their domain controllers for the past month so if yeah. that worm would be released now and uh, i mean looking at the rate of the exploits being published on git uh, on github now uh i mean that could happen in in half an hour we might have a war or in a day or a week but it's yeah it's it's a high risk but it, it's also one thing that i think about and that's in all the incident response we do i would say that the number one systems that aren't updated are the domain controllers because people are so scared at doing anything to them it's like they work don't touch them so uh, I, I think it's very important to stress the fact that you need to get your domain controllers up to date. You need to have a new, fresh OS. Don't have old legacy systems lying around on such important infrastructure services and such. So patch, 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 but also make sure that you lifecycle manage your OS so you are in a good position to do this, so to speak. Well, with that said, uh, I'm hoping that we will uh, actually revisit this topic uh, soon in another session. But uh, until then, stay safe, everyone, and thank you so much for your time.